right, today we're comparing and contrasting as well as setting you up with the best loadout for the M4A1, the M4A1 Assault, the M4A1 Tactical, and the M4A1 Scout. Now, I have already previously covered the M4A1, the M4A1 Tactical, and the M4A1 Scout separately in my weapon loadout video, so there will be some repetition in some of the points and setup for those three builds, but just so that we have a nice, fresh, up-to-date look at all four of these guns now, I will be completely revisiting those three weapons, and now finally the Assault Variant 2, so that we have a nice, fresh take on the entire lineup of the M4A1s in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This video will be even more packed than my video on the 416s because we are comparing four guns this time, which means I'm going to be very thorough with this one, guys. I will be discussing these four guns in the utmost of detail and really provide you guys with a very clear and concise comparison to really kick off the new year right. Now, just to give you guys sort of an overview here as to what to expect in this video in terms of how the video is going to be structured because it's a beefy one, first I'm going to give you guys my personal best builds for all four guns. And then I will compare and discuss the statistics of each gun side by side. And then once that's complete, I will test each gun's damage against Sentinel, Wolf, and Bodark targets. And then once that is all done, I will discuss why I chose the parts that I did for these builds. And I will give you guys my thoughts on all four guns. Now, throughout this video, there will be a mixed bag of gameplay showcase from each gun, so you can see how they play uh, in different play styles, and then with an indication in the top left corner so that you know what weapon is currently being shown, and then do look out for those spotlight videos on the M4A1 Assault and the M4A1 Scout, because I already have spotlight videos on the M4A1 and the M4A1 Tactical Variant. Alright, so before I give you guys my setups, I just want to preface this whole video by saying I do have the weapon mastery upgrades fully stacked up for my assault rifles and my DMR, so that means I have additional increases to mobility by 175, an additional increase to the handling by 140, and as well as 140 increase to the accuracy, and that's the same across both ASRs and the DMR category. So definitely fully stack up your weapon master upgrades for all categories if you can, because it will only make playing with these four guns that much better. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's set these things up. First, we're gonna set up the M4A1. We're gonna go with the ASR standard barrel, the ASR standard magazine, the ASR suppressor, the multi-A, the TA31H sight, the E-Mod stock, an auto single trigger, and lastly, the grip pod for the underbarrel. Now for the M4A1 Assault, we're going to go with the ASR Standard Magazine, the ASR Suppressor, the Mall DA, the EXP3X G33 Sight, an E-Mod Stock, and lastly the Grip Pod for the Underbarrel. Now for the M4A1 Tactical, we're going to go with the ASR Standard Magazine, the Mall DA, the EXP3X G33 Sight, an A2M Stock, and lastly the RU Vertical Foregrip for the Underbarrel. Now for the M4A1 Scout, we're gonna go with the ASR Standard Magazine, the ASR Suppressor, the Maldia, the Dual Range Sight, the ARM Stock, and lastly, the Bipod Foregrip Combo for the Underbarrel. Now that we've set those up, let's chat about what the difference is between the four guns, and then we'll test them out. All right, so here we have the four sets of stats for you to see how these rifles rank side by side, but I know it's hard to actually compare them this way, so I took that information and I made this for you, which should make the differences between them that much more clear. Let's delve into these charts a little bit and break them down because these four guns have some striking similarities between them, especially in those statistics, but once we get into these charts a little bit, we can really explore these guns and break them all down. So when it comes to the accuracy, these guns are all somewhat level. Sure, the M4A1 Scout ranks the highest in accuracy, which it should. It is a designated marksman rifle after all. It's designed to engage targets at medium to long range distances, so you want that weapon to have a solid accuracy level level, but the M4A1 and the M4A1 Tactical also have some decent firing capabilities with how accurate they are too, and I have spent a lot of time with them guys, and the accuracy never felt like it was lacking for those two guns. Now I understand the Assault Variant sits the lowest in the accuracy scale, but it isn't by much, and that is shown in how this weapon plays and how this weapon feels. I find it to be just as good in its accuracy when pitted next to the M4A1 and the M4A1 Tactical. When I have those weapon mastery upgrades, for my assault rifles fully upgraded because if you play with the assault variant without those mastery upgrades fully upgraded for your ASRs, then good luck taming that thing. The assault variant kicks like a mule. The shots will go all over the place if you don't control your shots 
without those mastery upgrades. Whereas the M4A1 and the M4A1 tactical variant, they play a lot tighter, even without those mastery upgrades. But again, guys, for the sake of this video, I'm mostly going to be comparing these four builds with full MK3 upgrades and fully stacked mastery upgrades because we want these things to play their best. So we've prepared them accordingly. Now, of course, the M4A1 Scout wins this category because the other three, once you get far enough, they will struggle to hit their marks. With the Scout variant, you know that when you take your shot, it's going to land where you need it to. Whereas the other three guns, your shots may land slightly off from where you want the shot to land, especially further out. And especially if you aren't utilizing single shot or burst shot firing modes. In automatic mode, you need to be cautious with the three assault rifle variants. But again, the M4A1 lineup of rifles is a very solid lineup indeed. And accuracy was never a weak point for either of these four guns. So I wouldn't even overthink this category because they are all strong in their accuracy once fully upgraded. But if we need to crown the winner here, guys, in the accuracy category, it would of course be the Scout variant because it allows for better precision. All right, next up is the handling. And this category is all about the time to aim and the recoil management. But before we do get into this category, it's important to make note of the different firing modes for each of these four guns. So with the M4A1 Assault, you only have automatic firing modes and burst firing modes. With the M4A1 Tactical and the M4A1 Scout, you only have a fixed single shot and burst firing mode. Now, with these three weapons, you can't change the trigger. They are fixed that way. The M4A1 is the only one of the four that allows you to swap out triggers for either a single shot and burst or a single shot and automatic firing mode. All right, so again, we're looking at the handling now. The M4A1 has the best automatic firing capability here with a bit of recoil on the upward swing, but not nearly as bad as the assault variants kick in its automatic firing modes. I will say this though, guys, the single shot firing mode on the M4A1 is excellent. It's pretty much in tune with the M4A1 scout single shot firing mode, but obviously a little less tame the faster that you do fire it. With the Assault Variant's burst firing mode, it's just simply great. Once you shoot it, it will park itself immediately back down to where it was aimed initially before you did pull back that trigger. So you can really rely on the Assault Variant to really realign itself after engaging targets, making this weapon one that I highly recommend you try out. However, when compared to the automatic firing mode of the M4A1, again, it's not as controllable. And you can see that on the chart here with what I'm saying. With the Scout Variant single shot firing mode, you can definitely rely on this rifle, much like the M4A1 single shot, like I said, but even more so with the Scout variant. It allows you the capability to fire rapidly in single shot firing modes and still have that rifle stay tracked onto your target without losing an inch of your aim. Plenty of instances where I needed to fast fire my M4A1 Scout with single shot firing modes, and each and every time the rifle stayed on point and delivered those shots while staying tame. When you start to traverse into its burst firing modes, the faster you pop off those shots, the more this weapon will kick up. So definitely either control those bursts, which shouldn't be too hard because one burst will do the trick for the most part, or you can just stick to that single shot firing mode with the scout variant and you will have amazing results. Now, lastly is the M4A1 Tactical. This is the king of handling in this family of weapons. The stats definitely show this one ranking the highest amongst the rest, but does it really have the best handling? Yeah, it does, at least in its burst firing modes. Those burst fires feel as good as the Scout variant feels in single shot firing mode. It's precise and it's level and it's always on target even when you pop off following bursts. Now, there isn't necessarily a king in this category because all four weapons are what they are and they play best in certain engagement styles and instances. I would say though, if you are looking for something that deals exceptional single shot firing capabilities, then the M4A1 Scout has your back. And when you need exceptional automatic automatic firing mode capabilities with a nice high rate of fire, then the M4A1 has your back. And if you need precise and controlled burst firing capabilities, you can go with either the M4A1 Tactical or the M4A1 Assault or even the Scout, guys. It really all boils down to preference. On one hand, you may want a weapon with precise single shot firing capabilities, but on the other hand, you may also want access to burst firing capabilities as well. So, especially in those mid to close ranged stealth engagements, guys, a weapon that you can rely on to quickly drop targets left and right, then the the M4A1 Tactical no doubt is your best choice here. If you want a weapon that does the same
aim at that, but at medium to longer ranged engagements, then the M4A1 Scout has you covered, no doubt. And if you aren't a fan of single shot firing modes at all, and you just love burst firing and automatic firing, then go with that assault variant. And lastly, if you want a general use M4A1 that is mostly for close to mid ranged engagements, and you can change triggers with based on the mission, then the M4A1 is the best all around pick because it will offer you an automatic firing mode that's much more balanced and manageable, unlike the assault variant, which definitely kicks a bit. And the M4A1 will also give you the option to have those burst firing modes as well too with that trigger swap. So it all really depends on what you want guys. And that triple burst again, it will drop targets like the tactical, like the assault variant and the scout variant. One trigger pull, especially on standard infantry. Now the next category is range, and it goes without saying that the scout variant is the clear winner here in this category, for the same reason why it's the king in the accuracy category too. It's a beefier all around rifle, and again, like I said, it's built to hit those targets farther out. So it's definitely my main go-to pick in this family of M4A ones for all my distant engagement needs. And again, it's because it also has that variable scope that we threw on it, and a triple burst firing mode too that it allows for, which really makes it a menace in those close ranges too. You aren't necessarily limited to just medium and long range firing with the scout variant. Of course, it will allow you to win battles up close too. And again, it's gonna be super sturdy. So definitely experiment with that scout variant. But when it comes to the other three variants, they are all about even in range. The tactical and its single shot firing should be able to be slightly more accurate than the M4A1 and the M4A1 Assault at a distance, just based off of how they stack up on the chart. But for the most part, the range difference will be hard to spot in the middle of a fight and you will have similar outputs from all three of the assault rifle variants when compared to the one scout DMR variant. Next up, we have mobility and recoil. For mobility, it's clear that you will move around just as fast with either of these four rifles as they are exactly aligned on those charts, especially with that faster over the shoulder walking and crouch walking you will get to utilize if you fully upgrade your weapon mastery systems. But it's the recoil now that we need to discuss. And we did sort of, I guess, discuss that already when we spoke about the handling. So like I said, the M4A1 Assault is the one that naturally is going to kick the most. And it's because it only it has that burst firing and that automatic firing modes. It's gonna naturally kick guys, but again, not too much. And I don't wanna knock the assault variant too much either because of that, because it definitely still feels balanced and it's barely noticeable, especially with, again, those weapon mastery upgrades. The three assault variants definitely feel similar enough. And I won't argue at all with the stats here because those bars are correct in saying that the tactical has the best overall recoil of the four guns. It manages to keep itself the most tame, I'd say and it really does just snap back to place immediately after letting off those bursts, especially in comparison to the other four builds, which also do offer the same lethal triple burst firing modes. However, you are locked to just suppressed firing, which is a big reason why I find myself not using the tactical all that much over the M4A1, unless I'm in the mood for some good solid stealth. And that's why it's so interesting that we also get the assault variant here too, because it allows for you to use that beefy boy in loud engagements and those stealth approaches too, with that same, like I said, that same burst firing capabilities that the tactical variant also offers. And I've said this a million times before, guys, it allows you to quickly drop targets with one trigger pull. But again, the M4A1, that standard M4A1 also provides you with the M4A1 tactical and the M4A1 assault provides you. It really all boils down to pressure at the end of the day. The M4A1 Scout definitely has some recoil too, but it's pretty manageable. Most of the time, you will have the edge on your enemies with it anyway because they won't even realize that they are dying until they are lying there dead, especially if shot and killed from a distance, which again, the Scout is built for. So overall, these weapons definitely give off similar feelings and vibes when playing with each of them. They have their similarities in many different aspects, and you can really tell they are part of the same family. But if it was up to me, which weapon I would say is the best go-to all around, I would give it to the M4A1, just because the triggers are customizable, and so is the muzzle. It's just the best of both worlds in regards to the tactical and the assault variants. But when you don't want the best of both worlds and you want to fine tune those two worlds and you don't want a general use rifle, then feel free to play with either the assault variant 
or the tactical variant to find what works for you. And then of course guys, the scout variant has your back like the granddaddy of the group looking over everyone at a distance. And you know what? This sort of just gives me an, a great idea right now actually. The M4A ones are just perfect for a full squad co-op session so your whole squad can run with M4A ones. You can each find that right role based on the weapon's strength. So think about it guys, one guy can provide overwatch with the M4A1 scout, one ground team of two men can be equipped with the M4A1 and the M4A1 assault variant, while the fourth man of the group, the, the, the kind of the solo stealth guy, he's gonna kind of weasel his way through those interiors, clearing what he can, while the other two outside are tackling the objectives head on. And then you got, again, that scout guy giving callouts and taking out targets from a distance, and it just sounds like a fun fucking co-op session if you ask me, guys. <laughs> so, anyways, now that we have those three guns set up, and you know what the difference is between the three guns, and I gave you guys a fun little co-op session idea, let's test each gun out against Sentinel wolf and bodog targets now too single shot center mass with and without a suppressor and we're gonna see how well each gun takes them down we're gonna start off with the m4a1 against sentinel with a suppressor two shots without a suppressor now two shots confirmed let's do wolves with a suppressor seven shots without a suppressor now Six shots. Let's do Bodark enemies, which includes Seekers, Troopers, and Tacticians, starting with a Suppressor. Two shots. Without a Suppressor now. Two shots confirmed. Let's do the M4A1 Assault, starting with Sentinel using a Suppressor. Two shots. Without a Suppressor now. Two shots confirmed. Let's do wolves with a suppressor. Six shots without a suppressor now. Five shots confirmed. Let's do Bodark enemies. Two shots without a suppressor now. Two shots confirmed. Let's do the M4A1 Tactical, which is integrally suppressed, starting with the Sentinel. Two shots against Wolves. Seven shots against Bodark now. Two shots. Let's do the M4A1 Scout, starting with Sentinel, using a Suppressor. Two shots without a Suppressor now. Two shots confirmed. Let's do wolves with a suppressor. Six shots without a suppressor now. Five shots confirmed. Let's do Bodark enemies. Two shots. Without a suppressor now. Two shots confirmed. Alright, so overall, as you can see, they all hit the same against Sentinel and Bodark standard infantry, but when it comes to dealing with wolves, that's where the damage difference is really seen here. Okay, so just so it's a bit easier now to see the winners and the damage, here you go. Both the Scout and the Assault have the best damage against Wolves by requiring one less bullet to take down Wolves whilst suppressed. And that means one of two things here. Everyone underestimates the Assault variant and everyone loves the Tactical variant, but I'm here to say that the Assault variant is the tactical variant killer because both guns have a one trigger pull kill towards standard infantry but with the wolves the tactical variant it needs three trigger pulls to drop wolves whereas the assault variant needs just two trigger pulls because it requires only six as opposed to the tactical variant which requires seven and guess what you can actually take that suppressor off when things get loud so overall i see no reason to ever use the tactical variant again when we have the assault variant which gives 
gives you that and more damage. However, I totally get that you lose a bit of that accuracy and you lose that single shot firing capability with the tactical variant that it does offer. So there's a bit of a trade off there. And again, it's all preference, even though I have no problem firing in single shot with the assault variant because in that automatic mode if you lightly tap that trigger you can still pull off single shots now this is exactly why i say the m4a1 is also such a great all-around assault rifle just the standard m4a1 because it's a combination of those two variants like i stated earlier and it really feels like it takes the best of all four guns even and really kind of contains it into one great fucking package and it's just a blast to use guys the m4a1 is a blast to use and honestly that high rate of fire is just top notch man not too many other assault rifles afford you that high rof the m4a1 does and it also comes with that burst firing mode too which isn't as strong as the assault variant or the scout variant but again it will do the trick more or less now this is where the scout variant really needs to be talked about and not sidetracked because the scout variant is actually a fantastic rifle it's not the best dmr by any means in ghost recon breakpoint it will never be the king of all the dmrs in this game but it really needs to be acknowledged as being a solid precise weapon especially amongst its family of guns being the ultimate killer here because it's for those players who really feel like parking themselves or moving slowly inching little by little with precision and with tact taking down your foes down range and this gun will definitely provide you that ability if you land your shots right it also has like i said a triple a burst firing mode akin to the assault variant with that same damage output to wolves while it's suppressed. So guys, it's actually a big toss up here. The M4A ones are all just so great. Again, it's a solid family of rifles that you can't necessarily pick the best one all around, but you can definitely find the right instance on when to use each of them in this game. And also, can we just appreciate how sexy the M4A1 Scout is? I know it's nowhere near the best DMR in the game, again, like I said, but it's definitely one of the best looking builds, I'd say. All right, so we discussed the damage capabilities and how they stacked up against each other. Let's break down why I chose the parts that I did for each of the four builds. Let's start with the M4A1. So I went with that Maldier, as you guys know, because it has the best visibility of all the lasers in the game, great additions to range, sway, and shot spread, and it's really going to tighten up your build and keep that bitch on point, especially in the night or when you're in that over the shoulder view, clearing targets like a madman. Definitely put on that Maldier boy, and I went with that ACOG, simply because a classic ACOG fitted on the M4A1, you can't go wrong, man. It's just how I enjoy my M4A1, and even my 4AC. Maybe it's because they both have that kind of compact look and feel and an ACOG to me just sits so well on them. Anyways, you can of course go with those legendary M4A1 iron sights too. It's really up to you what scope you put on guys. These are my personal builds like I said. Find what works for you. Now guys, if you do go with that ACOG like I suggested, it will allow you to hit those targets and those shots at close to mid-ranged engagements with a good line of sight. And then we got on that EMOD stock to really buckle down our M4A1 builds with that reduction to the vertical recoil by a 5%. But I also just love the way the EMOD fits on the M4A1. It just looks proper. It gives you a nice solid butt for Nomad to hug. And then of course that's all paired and tied together nicely with that grip pod to really set your sights straight. This M4A1 is staying nicely tucked the fuck down guys and secured. It's going to ensure you that vertical recoil is also going to be on point by a nice reduction of 7%. So you know your M4A1 is staying on point at all times. And also guys that grip pod gives you a plus 10 to range and that paired with the Maldier's boost to range your M4A1 will manage itself under pressure in most, if not all, instances. All right, guys, now let's bounce over to the M4A1 Assault. All right, so I went with that Maldier again on the side for the same reasons why I stated already for the M4A1, and I put on that variable ranged EXP 3XG33 sight to really afford us the ability to bounce at different ranges on the fly, especially with the assault variant, which, like its name suggests, a weapon that is used in an assault. So when you're in a gunfight, this is your M4A1 to go loud with. This is the beefy boy that you take out on a hot summer day in Aroa to pound back those Bodar forces. That EMOD stock reduction to the vertical recoil by 5% will also help keep your sights fixed on target each and every time and that grip pod will ensure it. So yeah, the M4A1 Assault is built more or less like we did our M4A1s. 
for the tactical variant, I went again with that Moldier and the EXP 3X G33 sight, but this time I went with that A2M stock, and I'm personally not the biggest fan of how the A2M stock looks on this rifle, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to take for that sweet 7% reduction to the horizontal recoil, and I favored a reduction to the horizontal recoil here in this case because, remember those charts I showed you earlier, how much higher the tactical variant sat in its handling and in its recoil? Well, this weapon already proves itself in its abilities to snap back to place immediately after firing, especially vertically. So this A2M stock here will really benefit us on the other axis. And boy, does it really tighten this fucking thing up, man. The M4A1 tactical build is gonna be solid. This is a solid build. And I also chose that reduction to the horizontal recoil in this instance because we already got a beefy 15% reduction to the already non-existent vertical recoil with that RU vertical foregrip. And it also provides us a snappy time to aim reduction by a 7% reduction. Now, for that scout variant, I gave it that Maldier again, you know the drill here, and I gave it that dual optic range sight because you want that big beefy scope for those distance engagements, and you want that dot scope for when you want to close in on your objective. Now, this scope will deliver, and so will that M4A1 scout's triple burst firing mode. And to make sure this thing does work well, we got that ARM stock to really solidify this weapon's ability to keep tame while letting loose those bursts. Now, guys, we got that that bipod foregrip combo, a must have for a DMR now across all DMRs. Although I totally see why some may hate having a bipod on any of these guns in Breakpoint because they don't fucking work. For whatever stupid, dumb, shitty reason, the bipods do not work. And I despise the fact that we have these, but they don't deploy. Anyways, they will give us a reduction horizontally by 10% in the recoil. And we also get a sweet 10% range increase here as well, and a reduction to sway making sure that reticle will stay where the fuck you want it to guys now i will say this again max out your weapon mastery upgrades for your assault category as well as your dmr category so you can enjoy this family of weapons the best in the best way they can all right and also upgrade them to mk3 if you haven't done so already it's night and day the difference with and without these bonuses so do use them and that's it for today guys that's all i got i hope i covered absolutely everything there is to cover on the m4a1 the m4a1 assault the m4a1 tactical and the m4a1 scout again an outstanding family of weapons in ghost recon breakpoint that are very fun to play with so that's it for me today guys i hope you did enjoy this breakdown and as always thanks for watching look out for those m4a1 assault and scout spotlights and take it easy